Well, surprise, surprise, we did not actually get to cover the sixth chords or the sus chords. We're going from triads to uh, sort of hybrid chords and then into seventh chords. We have the uh, sus chords, which are arguably triads too because they contain three notes. And then you have your add chords, which are triads with an added ninth or eleventh or another chord tone or extension. And then you have these kind of hybrid chords, I call them, which are a combination of the, of the two, say. And another thing is you have to keep in mind that you're going to find inconsistencies in the way that chords are notated. Uh, there are many reasons for this. So one is the limitations of what kind of voicings are, are available that our fingers can physically play on our instrument. Um, we only have six strings and so many fingers, right? Uh, although uh, Django Reinhardt did an awful lot with two fingers, I don't know how he did it, amazing. So you got to expect these inconsistencies, but it doesn't mean that we should not get a really good handle on uh, the, the, the um, concepts and the sounds that are available to us. So keep plugging away at it. So I'm getting way spread out here, I know, all over the place. My approach to chord theory is more based in pop and rock and jazz, not so much in classical. Uh, classical has some of its own sets of rules, which we won't be getting into here. I also wanted to mention that uh, when I talked about voice leading before, one element of voice leading could be creating this melody from chord to chord, but basically chord leading has to do with um, finding common tones or, or uh, close tones as you move from one chord to the next chord. That's, that's voice leading in a nutshell, really. We're going to cover later on chord extensions, hopefully sooner than later, because they're so interesting. They, there's so much spice there to the uh, harmony. Uh, it's more involved, and you're not going to run across some of these, probably in some of the uh, forms of music that some of you play, perhaps. Um, a lot of my friends and myself are, are playing um, contemporary worship music where we don't really run into a lot of complex chords or dominant chords. Now if you're doing gospel, um, you're going to probably run into a lot of dominant sounds and some pretty interesting chord extensions. So it's, it's all rich. Depends upon where you go with it. Um, without further ado, let's get into it here. So we've got the four triads. You've got major, minor, augmented, and diminished triads. Then you start adding other chord tones to that and you'll spread the chords out. So we're going to go one more step from a, a triad. Uh, it's sort of an in-between. I consider it in-between and those are sixth chords. Sixth chords, okay? So uh, an example would be a C with an A in it. Now you have a triad, but you're adding the sixth degree of the scale to it. Okay, and I demoed that before. Uh, sixth chords uh, can be either major or minor. And um, so let's go back to the G for sake of, of uh, demo here. G major, G minor, uh, G major six. G minor 6. Okay, these are pretty straight ahead voicings. I don't know if I'm showing my fingers properly here, but that's a ninth, that's a minor ninth, excuse me. <laughs> Back to the minor 6, okay. Sounds like a Pink Floyd song right there. sounding voicings that you can get from a sixth sixth chord okay there's a little little sixth chord it's only using a fifth degree of the scale the sixth and the third okay so there's no root in that unless you wanted to put it in here Another sixth chord there. They 
have their place. They sound a little old fashioned, but um, they're great in the right spot. Then, uh, so you have major six, minor six. You also have a, a couple of chords that I would group in with the six, and those are six, nine chords. Okay, so back to the C, if you have a C, an E, an A, and a D, that's adding the sixth. Uh, degree of the scale and the ninth, okay? And remember, if you go all the way up to eight and start to nine, it's the same as two. So a two is the D off of C, C, D. So that's another grouping of chords. Okay, on the eighth fret. Then you get the third, the sixth, the nine. It's the same voicing, it's just played in a different spot. Okay, now we move on to another group of, uh, these are actually sus chords. And sometimes they're written as no third chords in some of the sheet music we see. Uh, let me give you a couple of examples, but first let me explain what I'm talking about. So in a sus four chord, um, you would have a, uh, uh, a C and F and a G. So what happens is you suspend the third note above with a four, okay? So one, two, three, go to the fourth note, get rid of the, you eliminate the third note and replace it or suspend the fourth note. So it's called a sus four. And there are dozens of great sus four chords. I'll do a separate session on nothing but sus four sounds. It's, it's amazing. So now you've got um, also sus2 chords. So a sus chord w means that you're eliminating the third and replacing it with something else, either above the third, which is the fourth, or below the third, which is the second. So this would be a, a miniature version of a sus2 chord. Good sounding chord. It's contemporary sounding. It's used a lot. Um, you could play it. If you see a two chord in the um, in the progression, it could be talking about a sus two chord. Okay. Uh, you, oftentimes you'll see, uh, and I played it before. You you see a chord off of the C, and it's played like that. Okay, and sometimes. They call that a, um, a C2, okay? But uh, that is actually a, a C add 2, or a C add 9 would be a better way of putting it. So it's a C chord, 1, 3, 5, then you're adding that second degree, which is the ninth, same as the ninth, put the G on top. Sometimes you'll see sus2 no third which is kind of a waste of words because if it's a sus2 a sus chord symbol means you've eliminated the third so to say no third is a little redundant but who cares you let's know let's say for example you took a g chord here all right i'll play it with my thumb and we'll go uh, g up to g then we'll go jump up to the d Okay, and really what you have is just a, uh, a dyad or a power chord, a root and a fifth. And then if you add the ninth on top, okay, what do you call that? You see, you could call it a, a G no third add nine, or you could call it, some people would call it just a G two chord, you know? So it, technically, chord symbols don't always match what the guitar form is because we like certain forms. Yeah, this is one of Jimi Hendrix's forms that he liked to use. Uh, it's it, like in the intro of uh, Little Wing. Slide that all around. So it's just the, the root, uh, the fifth, and the ninth on top. Uh, add chords, well, C add nine we talked about. F add nine, here's an F triad, right? Ooh, I should tune that, hold on. So we've got a uh, an F uh, add nine chord, so again, when you 
have an add nine uh, in the in the chord description means you play the triad and add a ninth to it. Um, it could be uh, F major triad, add a nine on it. It's a very straight ahead voicing, but it works, and that's what it's describing. Oh, and going back to the <laughs> what started this whole series was a chord that Kyle was using, a form of a C chord. It could be either C major or C minor, but he was putting a, a root fifth and the flatted seventh in it. Okay, he was playing it up here, I think. But it kind of sounds Delta Blues-ish to me, so I, I interpret it as, um, you know, a, a dominant sound. But it could also be a minor. There's no third, so it could be a... the third there's some ambiguity could be major minor you can apply it to a lot of different situations now there's another set of hybrid chords that I I would call it a um, either a, a major chord with an added fourth or you could call it a sus four with an added third tension and I'm not sure exactly I mean I write it my own way but um, it combines the third and the fourth together and it sounds like this that all the time. It's a tight, grouping, complex sounding chord, mysterious. Another one would be um, sometimes you might see a C, in this case I'll do it in C, a C2-4 chord, okay? So now you've got a C in the root, you've got a G, a D, which is considered the 2, could also be a 9, right? We talked about and then you've got an F on top, which is like the four, okay? Great chord. Um, you might see that written in a variety of ways. It could be called a C2-4, or the two over the four, or two slash four. Uh, not, not a common chord, but you may run across it. And there are a number of other hybrid chords. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Same as the third, eleven, same as the fourth, twelve, which is never talked about in music theory. Thirteen is, that's the same as the sixth. Thirteen's a biggie, and you'll see why later. Then you go to the 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 seven, or or um, I guess you could call it the fourteen, <laughs> but there's no such thing really in music theory. And then you're back to the to the root again. 